Hunting is a culture, um, a culture and, and a tradition. In this, um, this modern day and age, it seems to be one of those traditions that um, we as a human race are becoming more distant from. So for me, it, it's one of these, these cultures that I'd love to see continue and for me to be able to uh, show my children, take them on adventures, uh, show them what it's really like to be part of the wilderness, um, embrace conservation, be part of the mountains and fill the freezer with um, good, clean, organic meat. Um, it's really important to me. And, and part of the, uh, these trips also is to be able to tell their tales To be able to um, capture these tales on, on film and on print, uh, to be able to show my kids as they grow up. This is just one year, uh, this is just one hunting season, uh, but it's definitely going to be one of those stories that I'm going to be able to tell them in the future. We've just been dropped in the tops by the helicopter. We've got, uh, looks like four or five days of alright weather, so we're going to find somewhere to set up a base camp, a bit of a camp, and then uh, get the binos out and have a look around. So we found a uh, reasonably flat campsite here. It's just doing a wee bit of a lean, but this is pretty much your typical New Zealand beach forest or South Island beach forest. It's quite bony country, there's not a lot of feed that sort of grows deep in the bush. So a lot of the deer tend to live uh, within that sort of first couple hundred metres of the forest edge and they come out and graze on the tusk lands. Now for for two. So a bit of a tradition. Started on a red stag raw hunt two years ago. Um, we followed the stag around all day, hadn't had any luck and then went quiet. And we thought we'd buggered it up. And then uh, me and the mate Hamish stopped an ridge and I pulled out a pot of the old stinky green lip mussels. And I thought, I oh, said to Hamish, oh, the mussels would be a good luck charm, as a bit of a joke. Chewed on a mussel, next thing the stag piped up right below us and then snuck in and shot him and it ended up being this uh, big 15 pointer. So ever since the old green lip mussels, good luck charm. Don't actually fucking taste the Fucking red. Pretty happy, eh? Mm. Be happy if you could pass me my beer. So we um, had quite a quite a good afternoon. We didn't really expect much because we only got into the block, yeah, you know, sort of late this Savo, but we got camp set up and went out there and had a good look around. Um, we probably saw a dozen animals, um, mostly all hinds. All of have a feed and settle in for the night and make a bit of a plan for tomorrow. We've seen sort of half a dozen hides and, and two stags come out of the bush and then they've sort of raced along the top and dropped back in the scrub again but I think one of them was roaring for a little while. Unfortunately it's all a little bit quiet. Sort of animal numbers I was hoping for. Makes it a pretty hard hunt if you hear the stags aren't making much noise. When the raw's like right in its peak, you've got a whole lot of stags that are just rutting around the females and scrapping and fighting, and they're really vocal. And it makes it a bit easier to get in close to them, and you can sort of roar back at them, and they'll come in and challenge you, and you can often get some really cool close encounters with stags. That makes it quite a lot of fun, but 
but not quite like this, it makes it a little harder, doesn't it? Well, that's the end of the day. Plowing the fat sack. See what tomorrow brings. We just picked up three young stags just on the bush edge probably. I don't know about a K away. There's three of them hanging out together having a bit of a tussle. They could be good candidates for the bow, so we might go and grab the bow from camp and just shoot straight over there and see what we can do. But they seem pretty distracted, so we might be able to get it nice and close. Got a nice dive, man. Yep. Six, seven hundred metres away on the bushy too here, but we've got to do a big loop right round behind them to get in into the bush behind them. So hopefully we can do that without being detected. So we've got a gentle breeze that's sort of coming across the face this way. I don't think we're going to be able to use it to our advantage because we need to be on that far side of them in the bush cover. Um, but there's a wee rise out in the open here which is 100 metres from the deer, so I definitely can't shoot that far. But I think we'll still use the bush and just see what happens when we get down there with the wind. There's only one stag left down the open, I don't know what the other two are doing. Right, let's go. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> Bro, that's what we came for. That is fucking epic. I've seen like the odd animal drop on the shot like that, but obviously hit his spine. 58 meters. See the original arrow over here? This is the one that's dropped it on the spot. It's a massive trophy in my eyes. You better take a, a red stag in the rut. Pretty excited. Pretty excited. Pretty stoked. Take all the good bits of meat off them. And lug it all back to camp. Pretty exciting morning. Looking forward to a cup of coffee. Oh, you can put the lid on. Oh man, 
That's a good feeling to be back in camp. No, bloody good, that was an excellent morning hunt. Got some meat, got some antlers. Time for a bit of a drink and relax for a bit, I think. Well, there's this theory when I tie knots that I can't tie knots, so I just tie lots. Trip we're um, to load up the old land cruiser we're heading for the airport, jumping on a plane heading to the North Island. Um, we're doing a week long backpack mission, walking into a wilderness area in seeker country. So, we're gonna go and chase some seeker stags. Um, with this area that we're going, the, the, uh, the deer numbers are so high, it's almost to a point of sort of overpopulation. So, um, it's gonna be great fun because we're gonna get a lot of animal encounters, but the uh, trophy quality and the condition of the animals is pretty poor, uh, mainly due to the overpopulation, the lack of feed. So, um, my brother Clay is going to come along on this adventure. He uh, doesn't really dabble so much in the, in the hunting side of things, but loves getting into the mountains with us. So, he'll be joining in on this. Um, and also later on in the trip, we've got a couple of friends, um, Monty and Poldy, both bow hunters as well, going to join us uh, midway through the trip. So. Um, yeah, they're coming in too, but took off their first seeker, seeker deer each as well, so yeah, it's going to be a great adventure. See ya before six. Yeah. Turn that on at four. Yeah. See you, Cam. Yeah. Put some pants on, would you? Huh? Put your pants on. I've got some on. Really? <laughs> that upsets Cam, eh? He actually gets real upset that they don't wear shorts. It's just rude. Come on. We just broke out on this wee slip here. <laughs> that was a good place to stalk along slowly. We just found a hind and a young one. Hind and a yearling. They're just up against the bush edge feeding at the moment. About 60 or 70 metres away, so. Again, there's two hinds and two yearlings just 
blood on it, but it's done the job. The old slick trick broadheads, oven, came in behind the ribs and it exited out through the shoulder. So, perfect shot. She's only run 20 metres, 25 metres, and tipped up. Pretty exciting. It's going to be a primo eater. It's going to be so good for cat meat. Awesome. Hello. What's up? <laughs> Are you recording me, you fool? Yeah. <laughs> is it beer time? We've got to eat some venison first. Where is it? In the back. Oh, yeah. Just made it to our second camp. We packed up this morning and had moved camps. We sort of hunted everything around where we needed to, so we've uh, set up all the gear and we've made it to the um, other spot here. So we'll um, set up uh, tents now and um, have some lunch. Pretty good. Well, we just heard a stag just to a hee haw call, not far from camp actually. So we might have to do a bit of a stalk through there and see what we can find. But he actually sounded like he's on the flat, eh? Okay, come on, Kim. Are you gonna come? What about your bag? In your opinion, did it sound like he was just through here? It sounded like he was sort of through here. Oh, there was yeah. Yeah, nice to meet you, mate.
So we've just broken back out in the river. I think we'll stick to our original plan and, and hunt our way up this creek because the wind's coming down quite nicely on us here. We'll just hunt our way up and have a bit of a roar and a listen. Did you not get record going? if there was much on the camera but there was just an epic little stalk. We stalked through this terrace and I think we were coming through and actually spooked something as we were coming through. But we got to this clear patch here and I said to the guys I oh, will just squat down here and give a give a roar. Um, and we both we all heard noises sort of sticks breaking over there and sticks breaking up there and then this guy just came straight through the trees and Cam spotted him um, before I did and then he just came straight in towards us and then stopped pretty much front on well, front on, sort of quartering on, and um, I let an arrow fly at about 25. <clears throat> Spine shot him and he dropped on the spot. Obviously wasn't the cleanest shot. And then I put a, uh, a second one in through his engine room um, as he got to here, and then he died really quickly. Here's the first arrow here. That's obviously still snapped off in the spine there somewhere, but all pretty instant. What an epic hunt. I love seeker stags. Absolutely love them. Awesome. I love the like the red pearling they get in the beech forest. Just such cool little antlers. Right when the sun 
hands out. Just gonna fire up the jet boy, have a wee coffee. Just parked up past me. Yeah. Good opportunity to listen to some ridges that are all up behind us here, so some good terraces around, but yeah. We obviously started the day well, so we'll just see if we can get any better. Say he's died here and gone straight off that bloody bluff. That's our luck, isn't it? No, we'll go, we'll go to the edge of the bluff and have a good look. Oh, good. The old go to the edge of the bluff, have a look. It's a fucking man hug, that one, oh, bro. That's that what is. it's all about. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is cool. What a choice little stag. Far out. Not to take life, not for mere sport, but to continue a tradition. The oldest. Hunting is a part of us. We go to the wild 
not the slaughterhouse. We hit the road, not the store. We meet friends along the way. We share stories, a cold beer, we learn a thing or two, and remind ourselves, as people, as hunters, why we're here. Hey. Got your first seeker, eh? Oh, shit, yeah, it was awesome. Well done, bro. Thank you. It's dope. It's so good. Among the trees, beneath the stars, it's true, it's wild, it cannot be taken away. It's who we are. We must continue to burn this wildfire for generations to come. Oh, it's so tender. Oh, it's so good. This recipe stays in the meat. I don't know. You can't get this guy back.